Race episode 241 of the J. <laughs> Review! 241, bro. 241. Hey, How's that work, bro? 241. Crazy. Hey, how long have we been doing this damn podcast, man? Since April of 2016, my friend. That's how long it's been. God damn it. We're April of 2016. Thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's just That's getting right. better and better. Like fine fucking wine. You know what I'm saying? You can That's follow right. us. They be in Benny Blue on all social media platforms. You know what I'm saying? You see my boy Benny over there rocking the blue for the motherfucking Detroit Lions. You know what I'm saying? He got something to be proud of. And I don't, well, yeah, we, we're going to get to that. But, you know, we do. You know what I'm saying? So, check us out on all social media platforms. You know what I'm saying? Instagram, TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Facebook, Twitter. All that shit. You know what I'm saying? Get with us. We get with you. You know what I'm saying? Our live stream here on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time, and AZ Time, of course. You know what I'm saying? As for people that don't know what Mountain Standard means. And then 930 on the East Coast. Hey, we appreciate all of our East Coast listeners, man. I'm yeah, always saying that up with us, baby. Because I understand, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got work and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we appreciate y'all rocking with us, man. Shout out to Philly. Philly, Philly. Philly. You know what I'm saying? Early. All the homies over there, you know what I'm saying? Uh yep. of course, you know, coming up, we got some college football playoff. We got Dion going to Colorado, or should I say Coach Prime? Coach got a little NFL Prime. week 13 recap. And of course, our week 14 picks all coming up, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all stick with us, man. Follow us on our individual instagrams of course at 73 king jb 73 that's mine and of course at benny blue eyes always and forever will be you know what i'm saying hey check us out man get with us you know what i'm saying we'll get back with y'all man you know what i'm saying no thing you know what i'm saying unless you on that bullshit and we ain't got nothing to do with y'all man uh for sure for sure you know what I'm saying? if you want to holler at me man you know what i'm saying you want to holler at benny you want to hear us out here in the valley of the sun all right we live stream casualsports.com Right, over and over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? It's JB and Benny Blue after dark. You know what I'm saying? Because we get a little nasty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do. If you've been rocking with us, you know what I'm saying, since 2016, you know how we've been doing since day one. All right, again, it's episode 241, man. So we've been doing this thing for quite a while. All right, you'll still want to hear our melodious voices. All right, you hear this voice? Benny, how's my voice sound right now? Crispy, buttery. Is it day, smooth is it day one? Is it day one? Day one All right, like yours the, south, is the same. Man. Yours is the same. If you still want to hear these voices, you know what I'm saying? Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. You know what I'm saying? If Benny has one as well, you know what I'm saying? For feed picks, but that's for his people that love him to death. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, tap in though. You know what I'm saying? My boy about that money. My boy all about that money. My boy all about that money. You know what I'm saying? But hey, our voices, Patreon.com slash JB and Benny Blue. You know what I'm saying? Sponsorship interviews. You know what I'm saying? New music, hate mail. We don't give a damn. Holler at us, man. JB and Benny Blue Review at gmail.com. Get with us. Let us know what you got going on, especially that new music. I know we bullshit about this a lot, but we appreciate that new music because we love giving our new artists feedback and we love seeing them go on to progress to be really good things and do great things, man. So please hit us up with that new music, man. And then people, again, if you feel like you got something to say, shoot us an email, man. We love, 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 love to interview people. You know what I'm saying? We do a really good job of it, I think. I'm not being biased, but I think we do a really good job of it. Uh, I know it's been kind of slow for us, Benny, but these athletes, man, they're hard to come by. You know hey, it's knee, it's it's knee deep, and we'll get to that. And listen, reviewers, we see the likes coming in already. So at any point you want you want us to talk about something specific, you got a comment, you got a question, you got something to say, God damn it, drop it in. Whether you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram, and we will get to that. I promise. Coming up, I got some college football talk. You already know our guy, the X in parentheses, Pert. Mark Therian is back in the building after somebody lost a bet. Ooh wee! That's right. William, you got something to say? God damn it! Like, like the, the South. Source Wars, baby. Like the South, you, know you got saying? something to say out here. You know what I mean? But first, we got to pay some bills. JB's in the Valley of the Sun. That means only one thing: tapping with our guys, Valley Boys Association Clothing. Go to valleyboysassociation.com and use code podcast. I don't need to get 20% off your order at checkout and get at our guy. It's Tim to Get your new or pre-owned vehicle. JB, a little birdie told me that uh, our guy, it's Tim to buy uh, is going to have a much bigger inventory starting in the new year. So it ain't just jo- job ah. Jeep, Dodge, Chrysler, Ram. I'm talking Ford. I'm talking Chevy. I'm talking Toyota. I'm talking whatever you need, baby. He's got talking you all that. Yeah. So message him, text him, review to 515-444-7003. And damn it, tell him that JB and Benny Blue sent you, and it'll get you into the car of your dreams. All right, Dr. Bridges, we ain't going to bury the lead longer. This man, uh, we watched him in our patent production meeting squeeze into a uh, pullover like it was a sausage casing. <laughs> and God bless him. He's a man of his word. Oh, He's our guy. The college oh, football 
X oh, hurt. Mark, there he is back in the building. That's right. There he is. There you flex the metal drum muscles. Ooh, wee. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Whole lot of chess. Whole yeah, lot of right. chess going on. You know what I'm saying? Whole lot of... Sir, all right. Yes, you got your gators. How how are you how are you feeling, sir? In that tight ass shirt. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, he's muted. Oh, we just talked to him. Deep himself. breath. Deep Jesus breath. Christ. Deep breath. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's out of breath from that. We know the shirt's restricting all kind of shit. <laughs> oh, my God. It How is about freezing. Now? How about Oh, now? there he is. There, there he is. is. There he is. The perk. Well, there he well, is. Knowles, uh, I'm feeling a lot uh, better after today's announcement that Florida has landed a five-star quarterback. for the That's team right. Team you just you teed me up for it. DJ yeah. Langway out of Texas. Yeah. So Talk about I mean, and, and, and the worst part about that is that he's going to be transferring to Jackson. I mean, not to Jackson State, but to Colorado. You know, what I'm saying oh, after, this season, so after this yeah. season, he'll be transferred to Colorado. Oh, <laughs> this is the next. This is the next bet. Like, will he stick to his commit commitment? So, but in the last three weeks, Florida has gotten a uh, top fifteen quarterback for this year and a top 15, or top ten quarterback for next year. So, I'm. Despite the lose the six and six record and losing to the hated Florida State Seminoles, I will say, but you know, I'm feeling pretty good. And not to mention those six losses, if I may, with the Gators, real quick, and then we'll just yeah. drop it all together. Uh, you know, five of those losses were to top 15 teams, and they actually beat two top 15 teams. So <laughs> figure that one out. Please. Moral six victories. and six for moral, Florida just sounds wrong. No, moral, it's wrong. Moral, moral victories never don't fucking count. So listen, the one thing, <laughs> thing I want to ask you, Mark, because you're because you're our expert, right? This whole transfer portal thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you said it. You guys scored big, right? Got a hell of a quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what does it even mean nowadays when a kid? Oh, commits? I don't know. Yeah, you're you're that's a great question because to be honest, I'm like you don't see players sticking to their team, even if they're five stars or four stars. So what? I so, don't know what it means. So, so really picture don't. this, Benny. P picture this, Benny. Right? A kid like this young man comes in, probably going to start as a true freshman, right? He'll mm, come in. I, get, I mean, we probably, don't have anybody else, so. He's probably gotten all, he's probably already gotten a half a million dollars just to commit, right? In NIL deals, just to commit. He's probably got that money already under the table. We don't even know it. It ain't even on the table no more. They only care. It's NIL, right? Yeah. So then he'll play and he'll make another five hundred thousand to a million dollars while he's playing. Yep. Then he'll decide he don't like the Gators and he'll go to Colorado to start for Dion once his son goes to the league <laughs> next year. So it's like after next year. So it's like then he'll get another fucking half a million dollars to go to Colorado. Right. Right. Now that's wow. what it's become. Yeah. It's it's become wow. a free agent market. I Right. I literally and, am and, born in the wrong fucking and Mark, era. Mark, Mark, how about, Mark, how about uh, Will's question there on the board? Willie Taggart interviewing with the Ravens. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where, where else is he going to go? He's failed at college. The only place he didn't fail at college with, it was at USF. But ever since he's left, USF has been absolutely garbage. But, you know, their athletic department has a lot to do with that. But in terms of Taggart, I mean, it, it, when you fail, you fail up in college football you know when you're a coach you continue to make money every time you get fired and tagger you know left or paid not to coach what paid not to coach yeah you get paid Ooh, not that's to severance. Coach. You, keep, you continue to fail up and you know florida had a coach ron zook who you know for a while you know he wasn't a bad guy and he, we, he we worked for up. spurrier but he yeah. followed spurrier but then he had a hell of a career as an NFL coach, you know, as an assistant coach. So, yeah, maybe this is what Taggart need. At the end of the so day, listen, he's getting paid regardless, and he doesn't even have Mitch, to recruit anymore. So good for Taggart. So Mitch just, Mitch just put it out there, Mark, that he's probably going to end up joining Dion over in Colorado, which, hey, listen, one thing hey. Prime is going to do, one thing Prime is going to do is he is going to bring talent, coaching, and players to him to make that team better. Like, this, it's the Prime effect. Right. It's crazy. Right. I, I agree with you. And I thought he was going to go to South yeah. Florida and do that. 
because he's yeah, from. I thought he was too. Ryan. Well, we'll get to that, Gemma. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that. We got a lot to get through. But speaking yeah. of guys failing forward in the old carousel, Mark, let's get into it. There's been some moves. So Matt Rule gets fired from the Panthers. Now he joins uh-huh. Nebraska. Jeff yeah. Brom, former Louisville quarterback, leaves Purdue, who's just in the Big Ten Championship. Now he's back at Louisville. Luke Fickle leaves Cincinnati for the Wisconsin job. The Louisville coach just left Louisville to take the Cincinnati job because they were just in the playoff last year. So all the carousel that, that you're that you're seeing before we even get to Coach Prime. What what are your thoughts on that, resident Pert? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the Cincinnati job is more attractive now because it's a Big 12 job now. So, you know, because that's Ooh. they're entering the Big 12. Uh, you know, but Luke Fickle is obviously the big win in this whole situation because Wisconsin, the program they've built, they play Luke Fickle style of football. You know, I think he was waiting for the right opportunity and I and he wanted to get back to the Big Ten, you know, and, and the job was there. Wisconsin was the job. So because he wasn't going to get Ohio State and he wasn't going to get Michigan. So what's the next what's the third best program in the Big Ten? It's Wisconsin and he got it. So he's back to the Big Ten, which he dominated defensively for years. And then he proved he's a great head coach at Cincinnati. And now he can recruit his players to Wisconsin. So that's probably the biggest win. You know, Mount Rule did a great job uh, at Baylor, which is a tough place to recruit because of Texas. But you got all those players, you know, in Texas. I don't see how he's going to be able to recruit anybody to go to Nebraska. I just don't. I, I don't. Nebraska is just really a dead end job. Scott Frost, you know, was rumored to actually be coming back to Florida to go to USF. You know, which would have been a good move for him because I think Scott Frost is still a good coach. He's just not a good coach at Nebraska because it's a very difficult place to coach football. So we'll see how Rule handles that. And, of course, Jeff Brom going to his alma mater to coach. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of any time that happens. Like, you look at Spurrier. And, look, Jeff Brom got Purdue to the Big Ten championship game this year. Now, were they the greatest team this year, no. Did they have a shot at winning the Big Ten championship? Probably not, but he got him there. So Louisville's a great right. opportunity, and it's a place he's passionate about. So that those will all be fantastic moves, except I think Matt Rule is probably the worst of all the moves. Yes. Yeah. One thing, well, you know, one thing about this whole college coaching thing is that I got to see it before it happens, right? I got to see it to believe it, and then when it happens, I still don't believe it till next year after it happens. So, like, you, you don't know what's going to happen. Of course, we speculate like everything you said, Mark, was dead on, right? You know what I'm saying? Everything you said was was completely on. Uh, and I agree, Matt Rule is probably going to be the worst hire and the worst, you know what I'm saying, the worst tenure of the coaches it, that got hired newly. Great mind in college, in, in football, and he's proven it himself at the college football level. But but what are you going to be able to uh, – Nebraska just doesn't have it. They don't – Tom Osborne – is is not coming out that tunnel anymore and the mystique and the nostalgia nobody knows that anymore it's been gone for years and it's nebraska it's not like but, you know but the, the, but the thing the thing about that though mark is like you know football has evolved in many different ways like so there are a lot of different teams even georgia tech has transformed you know say into running a more pro style offense right, right. where we all understand georgia tech has got the same thing beer you know say hand off pitch you know what I'm saying play yeah. action off the beer yada 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 right you know what i'm saying right. so they, they they can do it. Scott Frost just wasn't the guy to do it, right? You know what I'm saying? So he's right, he's probably a good right. position coach. He's just not a very good head coach, right? That's yeah. the thing. So with a better yeah. mind and a better leader, right? I mean, I, I hate to just say it, but I mean, you take send send Deion Sanders to Nebraska. <laughs> That's well, what happens, right? Oh it, my it, god. It, 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 if you think I, about I, it from yeah. if, from a college level, Matt Rule didn't didn't fail forward. He turned no, around Temple. No. He turned around Baylor. And right. not for nothing, Nebraska doesn't have the sheen that it that it used to have back in the nineties, like Mark said. But it do, it does have enough of a brand where, let, fellas, let's be honest. And JB, you said it with the NIL. College football now with the transfer portal and NIL and just branding in general, it's an right. arms race. So right. if Nebraska injects it with the boosters and they get the recruiting pipeline, they got the money. now you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be doing it. But here's the thing, the and money. I'm gonna lead I'm gonna I'm gonna lead this right to Coach Prime next. Now Nebraska is literally one state over from Colorado. Now right. it's a complete arms race between Colorado and Nebraska to try to get all these transfer portal kids in because they're gonna yeah. see, oh shit, look what he did at Baylor. I you know, I'm gonna fuck up the situation. I wanna get to rule. But then Dion's going to be online too, because now yeah. it's going to be trying to get all these kids who are unhappy with their situation. And that takes me, gentlemen, to Coach Prime leaving Jackson State for the head coaching job. He was 27 and 5 there, two time SWAC champion. 
been a lot of debate about how we left Jackson State, why he left, the circumstances, what it means for HBCUs. But JB, let me throw it to you first. What do you what do you think it means for Coach Prime going, and what do you think it means for Jackson State him leaving? Let me clear my throat first for before I say this. All right, uh, the great the the great slick puller. All right, uh, the great poet that is slick puller. You know what I'm saying? Rapper? Yeah, CTE click. Yes, there used to be Jeezy and Blood Raw. You know what I'm saying? And and slick yeah. puller. He had a line in a song that went like this: If anybody got something to say about Slick P. It's fuck them. I don't owe you nothing, right? So, Dion don't owe Jackson State nothing. He don't owe him shit. He had a three-year contract. He played his three-year contract out, right? He brought them success. He brought them notoriety, right? I'm talking about nationwide notoriety. Everybody in the world or the world of college football knows who the fuck Jackson State and where Jackson, Mississippi is right now, Right? Right now, because of Deion Sanders, and of course, some, some open-minded people that were in that whole, you know what I'm saying, Jackson State family. Now, it's on the rest of those Jackson State, Jacksonians, as we call them, to continue to push that, right? Now you got to know the writing, okay? Uh, so Dion ain't did nothing or not. Uh, and some people have some questions about how he left in the whole swag championship trophy presentation, all that shit. Like, hey, at that point, that man had been to Colorado, right? He had already took the job. The kids at Jackson State knew he took the job, right? He went, coached, gave him all he had, passion, everything that he is, right? And they he won. wasn't phony, wasn't fake. They won <laughs> convincingly, right? And at that point, he was like, shit, I didn't do what I need to do. And I'm out, right? right. And I'm out. But with that exit state, exit, stage left. He's trying to go, <laughs> right? Because he got to go to fulfill this, this money that he just accepted. Right? Because now he has another task to take on. So, Deion Sanders don't owe Jackson State nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's just folks, you know what I'm saying, that say, oh, they, they want loyalty, which that's not what coaches do. Any Power Five coach has done the same thing. And we talk about trending or graduating to a higher level or pushing themselves to a higher platform. Every, every Power Five coach that has, that has progressed has done the same thing, has left without remorse right yeah. so mark, get over mark what you think <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say i'm sorry no what 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 are, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the whole situation you know i mean yes i mean dion since the day we've known him you know uh playing baseball uh playing football being the superstar that he was at florida state you know uh he's always been about one thing and that's dion and not only has he only been about Dion, he's been about what fills Dion's wallet. You know, gold chains, diamonds. Dion is about Dion and Dion's money. And then he's all about his children's money, too. So his son it was amazing during the press conference. He did that. That's your quarterback. And he's like, so stand up. That's your quarterback. Like, everybody knew that was going to happen. Like, you know, he brought his son. He, to said, he said it, Mark. He said it when he, when he literally, again, the kids yeah. at Jack State knew he was leaving Colorado already. Yeah. Because yeah. he went to Colorado and he gave right. them the I'm coming speech. Yeah. Right. And he well, told and, the kids in Colorado, uh, yeah. I'm bringing my luggage with me and it's full. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that was, to me, that was one of the most telling moments of the whole thing was when he was telling those kids, he's like, pack your bag, get out of here. You know, I mean, he's basically saying to transfer because I don't want you. You know, I don't want, I want players that can play. And look, I, I get all that. I, I, you know, am I. I don't know. I've look. I mean, I'm a Gator, so obviously Dion hasn't been one of my favorite people. But I'm also a Cowboy fan, and he was my favorite people during that time. And you can't knock who Dion Sanders was, but he is controversial. He's more, you know, and he is going to be controversial no matter what he does at any time. He's controversial when he went to Jackson State, and now there's controversy with him leaving with the rumors of theft and things like that. So there's lots of weird things. Colorado has nowhere to go but up. They've been terrible for almost 30 years. I think, what was the national title? Was it 90? So it's been 32 years since they've even been relevant. Yeah. And Cordell, uh, Stewart, Cordell, Cordell Stewart. That was fucking, 94. Uh, Rashad right? Salam. Right? Rashad Salam Westbrook. Was right. Yeah, so they, yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's, been, it's been 25, almost 30 years since Colorado has had anything. 
So this is what Colorado needs. They need a guy like Dion to shake things up. My opinion, yep. though, I, I just, if I had to guess, I don't think he'll be as successful as he was at Jackson State because it's just a different ball game. You're now recruiting against Ohio State and Michigan, and you're playing in the Big Ten. Yeah, you got to go with Nebraska. And I do, do I believe Colorado got the better coach? Uh, I don't think they got the better coach, but I thought they got the better leader. So so I think more kids will want to play for Dion than they will for Matt Rule. So in right. that deal, Colorado wins. But at the same time, he's still got to play Ohio State and Michigan sometime. He's still got to play Big Ten. You know, so will he ever go to the playoffs at Colorado? I don't think he'll be as successful. I really don't. I don't think those rah-rah speeches and getting the transfer portal – like kids are kids if they're transferring from another school they want to go to the SEC first and they want to go where the dollars are first and last time i checked i don't think colorado has as many nil deals as any other school especially in the southeast Department. right but it, it, but it's it's because they've been down and look at the the reality is like like tim was saying in the comments and kind of what you've been alluding to at the end of the day this might be a situation where he's there he he's at colorado for three years or four years he's yeah. a recruiting class or two and then the upward mobility continues and he may maybe he ends up at florida state or an SEC but he has school to win well sure and he has to win though you right, but I mean? they they're one eleven last year. So if they win seven games next year, that's a huge improvement. And I mean, listen, if we're being honest, at the end of the day, Dion proves one thing about a business model because it's the same thing with Nick Saban. You got to be a hell of a CEO and a pitch man. And if you surround yourself with great coordinators and position coaches, that's the model to be successful. Of and course. that's what Jackson State and other swag schools can do. It's like, listen, get. Chad Ochocinco, get someone with a big personality that can recruit people, surround him with good coordinators and position coaches, and the kids will come. Because now, that, like you said, they're going to they're gonna follow that guy as opposed to, and listen, Nebraska is a prime example. Nebraska hasn't been relevant since like really the 90s either. So right. they could have easily went in and tried to make that move. Colorado was just bold enough to do it. You know what Bo I mean? Bolini actually did very well at Nebraska, con considering he's just a weirdo <laughs> yeah he did i but but the same thing they had their glory days in 95 and, and like you know winning the title and it was the same type of shit they're hanging on to that stuff from from uh back in the day and yeah well you, you make a good point but i you know i think it's cool i think i'm it's cool to see colorado make the move and i think it's just it's just fun it shakes shit yeah up, you know what i mean because sc and ucla going to the big 10 so now the, the yeah. pac-12 is going to open up yeah so. it, it, he made he made the move he made the money move he he didn't because yeah. USF would have certainly been the move, but he made the Big Ten money move. He I knows agree. that USC and UCLA are coming in, so he made the Power Five move. And to be honest, it's probably the only Power Five offer he got. So, you know, if he's successful at Colorado, then he can pick his school. Hell, he could be Alabama's next coach when Nick Saban finally retires. <laughs> I wouldn't say Hell, all. I, I wouldn't say all that. I I'm wouldn't go that saying, far. You never know. Whamba, whamba, bamba, yellow, hammer, give him hell, Alabama. No, not that hey. Alabama. Hey, I'm hey, hey, hey. Look, hey. I'm going let's, crazy. Let's, let's just be real. <laughs> well, I'm let's, being real. He's got to be, be realistic. All my right. prediction is, is he's not going to be as successful as he was in the Southwestern Conference. That's my It's prediction. going to take him a while to get what he yeah. needs. Right. Well, yeah. uh, in Colorado, you know, they'll give him time. Do but the math they, like after answer. year four. <laughs> They're yeah. not going to give them much more time. So, of course, that well, time, time will not will be over after year four. Now, <laughs> I give, time will I be give part time, and it'll go to oh, fucking, no. fucking overtime. Yeah, it'll be, all right. It'll it'll be late night, uh, midnight snack. So, time. Well, spe speaking of doing well now, Jim, we'll, let, let, we'll focus on the present. So they <laughs> uh, they released the Heisman finalist. It is mm. quarterback. From Georgia, Stetson Bennett, quarterback mm. from TCU, Max Duggan, quarterback from Ohio State, CZ Shroud, and quarterback from USC, Caleb Williams. Real quick, and I don't know this, and, and Mitch, and maybe you can confirm this. Stetson Bennett is, I believe, 25 years old. I think Lamar Jackson is 25 years old. Here's a new rule, Internet. You cannot be nominated for the Heisman Trophy if you're over the age of 23. If you're fucking 25 years old playing college football, you need to be out there paying taxes. Like, hey, fuck, fuck the hey, hey, what oh, about no. the BYU kids, man? Nah, what about the they Mormons, can, they can bro? Get the 12, they can get their 12 wives, you know what I'm saying, the reality shows. I don't give a damn. What about 25 the Mormons, years old? Man? 
<laughs> Hell no. So look, listen, Mark, who, listen. Mark, who wins? Mark, who wins? And who got stiffed in the nominations? Well, I mean, we'll start with Steph, Tendon Hooker, easy. It, it, I think it just goes to show you that this now has become a, a situation where Heisman voters are literally only watching the championship games. Um, and Max Dugan got in because of his play in the championship game. You know, they he they were all like he became this dying, this darling for about 20 minutes, you know, on Twitter when he rallied him back and they tied it up and went to overtime only to lose. And you're looking at this right now and you say to yourself, OK, uh, Caleb lost uh, 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 twice to Utah lost, and CJ Stroud didn't even make the championship game, but he's been the number one guy all year. And so all three of those guys lost, and the only guy that's won is the defending national champion and guy who was born. I saw the stat today. He was born in 1997, the same year Lamar Jackson was born, which Lamar Jackson, seems like it eons ago that he won the Heisman. Stetson Bennett is here in the Heisman, and, and he's there because he's just been a winner his whole time. But his numbers are just terrible, and he'll never – he's just – he just doesn't flash anything. You know, I made the prediction two weeks ago that it'd be Caleb Williams. Um, he still did splash some brilliance uh, during the championship game, but then he didn't lead them back to winning. So now I think because, and I think this is the world we live in, not because he's the best player in college football and not because he's even the best player out of the four, I think Max Dugan pulls this one out. I, I don't Ooh. like it. Ooh. I don't like it, but Max Dugan was this Twitter, like he was a sensation during the Big 12 game, and he let him back. So I think voters who watch the championship games are going to put Max Dugan over the top. It'll be very close. Okay. It'll be between Williams and Dugan, and, you know, Bennett's just there because he's Stetson Bennett. And, uh, you know, uh, CJ Stroud was number one the whole year. But, yeah, again, so, you're not so, seeing the numbers that you yeah. were. JB, JB, what you so, think? Jump so, in. yeah, I understand what you're saying, Mark. But this is what's going to happen. Uh, Williams is going to win the Heisman. Uh, there is numbers. I agree. They, they, all they care about is numbers. All they care about is numbers. Stetson Bennett, you know what I'm saying, is trash. He'll be a great backup quarterback in the NFL for a long time, uh, just <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, Max Dugan gives me Tebow vibes. We all know what happened with Tebow. All right, you know what I'm saying? This cat wouldn't play baseball, you know what I'm saying? He played better baseball than he did football for years. What a playoff uh, game. You know, so, yeah, you know, Caleb Williams is going to win. Stroud, you're just going to fall into a long line of horrible Ohio State quarterbacks that make it to the NFL. So, <laughs> yeah. I hate to say that. I hate to say that. Hey, no, listen, I I'm just – I'm just, I, look, like I said, Caleb Williams was my prediction two weeks ago. I still think he's second. I just think there's this going to be this Max Dugan shock. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if Max Dugan wins it, and I would. Uh, but if that kid, I, if that kid win the Heisman, they, they, they could throw the Heisman away. Uh, well, kid, exactly. They, I don't think the Heisman has as much credibility as it did. But first of all, it's always been a numbers thing. But like, who were the best players? Like the SEC Offensive Player of the Year is not standing there. He's not there. Hendon Hooker was right. one of the most dominating players in all of college football this year. He's not in New York. Why? JB, JB, real quick, who do, you, who do you think got stiff before he moved on, if anybody? Hooker. Hooker, easy. Okay. Right? Hooker. I mean, you talk about just, like, coming from – I mean, like he's first of all, he's been there quite a while, and he's been under the radar, and he's been consistent, right? Now he's had a breakout year because Tennessee is finally starting to ball a little bit, and they're going to go to a nice bowl game this year, and he ended up getting hurt, you know what I'm saying, which is fucking unfortunate. Hooker, of course, got stiff. Easy. All right. And finally, gentlemen, college football playoff got the final ranking. So it's Georgia, Michigan. They both won. TCU loses in overtime. Uh, of course, Ohio State falls into the playoff, and then they had Bama and Tennessee. So, Mark, are you are you happy with the four and the order of the of the the quote unquote six? You know, first of all, I I just think you're an amazing person, Benny. I mean, you, no, I have I have nothing. I have done nothing for the last of basically my lifetime, but trashed Michigan. All I do is trash Michigan. I come on your show, your show, your show, <laughs> and I trash your team. I know it's it's also yours, JB, but like, you know, it's Benny and JB, and all I do is trash Michigan. I come on, I'm like, Michigan has no chance, no we're, shot. We're pro Michigan here, so it's, I, I'm feeling this yes. too. 
We're pro okay, Michigan here. Okay, JB. All right. I I I just trashed them constantly. This and is true. What they did to Ohio State at Ohio State, and then what they did, I mean, to Purdue, which no one was shocked by that, but still, I mean, it wasn't even close. Yeah, it blew them out. Yeah. Yeah. But yep. what they did, but blowing out Ohio State at Ohio State was yeah, shocking. Yeah, that's the that's a yeah. No, just you deserve kiss. it. They've won. They've beaten Ohio State now twice in a row. The only reason Ohio State is there is because you know they had one loss versus all the SEC teams. Look it, at the end of the day, I've been a big. I'm glad we're going to the playoff finally because I've always hated this four team. I just don't think it evens out properly. I think all the conference championships, just like basketball, deserve to be in the playoff. So, for instance, in TSCU, yeah, they could be in the playoff in a, in a 12, but Kansas State would have to be in there, which I guess they would. But Kansas State should be the third team in this, you know, in my view. So when I look at these, I, I say to myself, would Ohio State beat uh, Alabama or Tennessee? And the answer is I would love to find out. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah, not it'd be sure. kind of dope. Yeah, and uh, and the fact that Tennessee beat Alabama, yet Alabama, um, all I could say is thank God JB wasn't right and they didn't squeeze Alabama in because that would have been a sham. It, if anybody, Tennessee is the team that belongs in there the most after the year Tennessee they had. beat them. Again, they, yeah, they screwed Tennessee with Hooker and they screwed them out of the playoff. But Ohio State has one loss. It was a bad loss. <laughs> I mean. At home in a blowout, it was a bad yeah. loss. Two, two, they fell in because SE 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 lost two, the same team twice, teams, right? Yeah. yeah. So. TCU losing two to the championship game. Uh, look, they've been great all year, but it's it's they're they're in such an irrelevant conference in this thing. Yep. You know, it's going to be Michigan Georgia. I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I think it'll actually be a better game than uh, if it were Georgia and Ohio State were number two. So well, I think you're yeah. going to see Georgia, you know, play very, blow out Ohio State, but they'll play a close game against Michigan. And, in fact, Michigan has a great opportunity to win the national title. Mm-hmm. I am shocked that I said it, but they look I'm, so Yeah, good. I'm a little surprised. You've, you've had a little vitriol on your blood, but now it's, they you know, look, it's I, they the, go, the gap is closed. Georgia has closed. not looked that good this year, and the SEC has just been a little more balanced this year, except Georgia, because Maybe Georgia has had those recruiting classes, but since the well, transfer... Here, here, here's the harsh reality, guys. Here's the harsh reality, right? Georgia, you can give them the national championship right now. Right, because the fucked up part about Georgia is they can win, they can win games any way they want to. So with Stanford yeah. Bennett being mediocre as fuck, you know what I'm saying? They can fucking tighten up chin straps, you know what I'm saying, with them damn big gigantic offensive linemen they got, and just run with them 17 star fucking running backs they got, and just completely smash the fuck out you for the entire game. Don't Georgia's forget defense the tight ends. is seven times better. <laughs> George, oh yeah, it was a seven foot eight tight end they got. Yeah, so uh, Georgia's defense is three times more superior than Michigan's defense. Like yeah. you're gonna see just a complete difference in talent when they play. Now again, Michigan's done great things. It's wonderful to see them there. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna fight to the damn death, right? But goddamn, Georgia's just a fucking juggernaut right now. And unless they just completely do some dumb shit and just fuck it off. You can just give them a trophy right now because the Kirby Smart gonna have them ready to play, and then they're just too talented, and and they they just do what the fuck they do. Agreed. True. I just think the game will be close. I yeah, it's, listen, close. listen. If there's one thing that's true, I know, I know. Given given my my Michigan homerism, at the end of the day, that gap from last year to this year has closed, and it's closed fairly significantly. Is would Georgia be the favorite? One hundred percent. Georgia would probably still be like a. Seven to ten point favorite, I would say. Yeah. But still, last year it was very telling and very exposing. This year is a lot different. If, if Tennessee or Alabama Michigan. was, if Tennessee Alabama was a team to beat, I, I would, I would put my money on Michigan, right? Straight right. I, I understand why. Yeah, why the, the the betting favorite would definitely be Michigan. So before we let Mark out of here, we're saying it's Michigan and Georgia in the championship in SoFi. Which if Michigan goes to the championship, and Tim as my witness. We will be in the building for the game. Win, lose, or draw. We will be what? there. Are you Listen, bringing what, your boy? Yeah, he's flying out when we're getting tickets, and we're going to go. If Michigan goes to go What about, go, what about this boy? You How much are your... the tickets? What the fuck? Like, yeah. like, a, like, a, like a smooth rack for the for the nosebleeds? 
So, yeah, you know, yeah. I haven't been I mean, I, 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 I mean, I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, you just got to let me know. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk offline. But the point is, if Michigan's playing for the Natty, I'm going to be in the building, even even, even if they lose by 35. So uh, we're saying Georgia, Michigan. We're all saying Georgia, Michigan in, in the game. And you're saying Georgia is just – Georgia's getting it done is what we're saying. I, I say Georgia gets it done very close. I, I, I could see this going down to the wire. Minus remember, 330, says Mitch. Minus, what? Minus, 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 or pardon, minus 130 is the, is the betting odds for Georgia to win it. So that's obviously yeah. very good. Yeah. Yeah. They just, you know, Vegas, Vegas is just yep. trying to be careful, right? They don't yep. want to throw those stupid shit out there. Yeah. Yep. Why would why would Georgia not be the favorite? In fact, anytime Georgia was not ranked number one this season was a travesty because they won it last year. They haven't done anything. Right. So did it, any uh, reason yeah, any reason wins. to drop off? Georgia wins, but close. But close. Okay. There it is. All right. Well, Mark, we appreciate you squeezing into that Florida State pullover, showing off them guns and saying some nice things about the Michigan foosball team. Yeah. Uh, we will see you after the holidays and after the championship week and to recap all this. Uh, right. You know, until then, you know, keep following that Ed, Ed Ordron, you know, workout plan and go Gators. Keep getting them recruits. You'll be there before you know it, transfer bro. portals. You'll We're be there coming. before you know it. Works right. Coming coming Coach Prime. Prime. College Coach Prime is going to take y'all's quarterback. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, College no. football is better with this team. Uh, they are. We agree. We All right, Mark. We, agree. we love you. Happy holidays, brother. Thanks. We are. Bye. Yeah. That's our guy, Mark, the, ex, the the resident expert. That's right. Joining us here on the review. Right. And before we get into some NFL talk, baby, let's pay some bills. God damn it. You know what I'm saying? Tapping with our friends over at Valley Boys Association Clothing. Go to valleyboysassociation.com and use code PODCAST22 for 20% off your order at checkout. Go to valleyboysassociation.com and tap in. And, of course, get it our guy. It's timdubai.com. That's right, baby. Go, 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 Tigers, Will. That's right. Get your new pre-owned vehicle text review to 515-444-7003 or make sure to message him at It's Tim Dubai on Instagram on Instagram or Facebook and he will get you into the car of your dreams. I promise you. So uh, that's what we're doing here. You know, we've got to, of course, got to cover the college football and we got to get into some motherfucking foosball. If uh, JB's uh, screen will pop up, God damn it. We got to get this guy back online. This fucking internet, but we are going to be bringing in from parts unknown our research and segment producer, money making Mitchell Hughes. Uh, Mitch, we got a lot to talk about, um, including the uh, firing, somewhat unexpected firing of one GM of the Tennessee Titans, uh, which we will get here to a moment. But first, uh, while we're waiting for JB's video to kick back in, my kitties blow out the Jags 40. I almost stuttered for 40 to 14. They actually got a lead and held it, Mitch. Jared Goff, 31 for 41, 340 yards, two TDs. And in a recent interview with ESPN, he said that he's playing the best football of his career. A couple quick stats for you. More passing yards this year than Aaron Rodgers. More pass TDs than Tom Brady. Fewer interceptions than Patrick Mahomes. Higher pass, higher pass TD interception rate than Josh Allen. And higher pass rating than Justin Herbert. Uh, how do you feel about the kitties, and how do you feel about one Jared Goff, sir? You really nitpicked some stats out there to feel excited. Passer rating is a joke. Um, I know. I just probably let me more feel accurate good. than Josh Allen also. <laughs> um, the Tom Brady touchdowns, I, he's not even a top five touchdown thrower right now. Aaron Rodgers is trash. But it's Jared Goff, Goff bro. It's I get Jared that, Goff. but you nitpicked the crap out of some stats that I don't care about. Hey, listen, Benny. Talk your <laughs> shit, bro. Fuck it. You deserve to talk your offense. shit. Come on. Jared you Goff deserve to talk your shit. Mitch, give him some Jared fucking Goff credit. Jared Goff was in the XFL two months ago. Mitch, he was in the XFL. Jared Goff Good job. You have trash, a mediocre right? average quarterback. Congratulations. I know, look, I know, I know nuns. Okay. I know nuns at St. Mary's Catholic football school for the blind, you know what I'm saying, who have better stats than Jared Goff right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay <laughs> because he's leading them to victory. That's all that matters, right? right. That's all that matters. He's leading them to victory. I wish our I wish our quarterback would do some Jerry Goff shit and lead us to victory. See, now you beat me to it. I'm bitter. At the end of my sentence, I was going to say I'd still rather have Goff than Tannehill. So ah, I knew it. I was literally going to say. I'm bitter. I, I'm right. literally going to say. I'm, I'm bitter. I'd rather have 
love it. Detroit's office coordinator than our office coordinator. I'm bitter. Oh, I'm bitter. I'd rather that too. I'm I bitter. love it. This is really oh, sad. I'm really oh, oh, Will oh, calling him out. Mitch playing that violin. Oh, no. Mitch, violin. Hey, Mitch, you, Mitch, you are a fucking crowd, baby. I was going to give you that. You are I am a fucking not a crowd, crowd baby. baby. What are you talking you about? You are a crowd, baby. When it comes to the fucking tight, you are a crowd, baby. You know what I'm saying? You are going to make every excuse in the book. You know what I'm saying? For the fucking Titans. All right, you're gonna make stats up and say, "Oh, well, they did this, but they did that." Hey, look, just accept it, bro. Y'all just ain't winning, doing what you did last winning year. Football, hey. winning football. But still, I I re- I'd rather game. be in y'all's <laughs> shoes than our shoes, right? <laughs> All right, I'm, listen, I'm bitter. Speaking speaking of uh, speaking of being cryberry crybabies, uh, the Niners whooped the Dolphins thirty three to fifteen. But Jimmy G has broken his foot out; could be out for six to eight weeks. Uh, but old they they're calling him. They're calling him. Uh, there was Big Dick Nick JB, aka our guy, so to the top Nick Mullins. But now apparently it's old Big Cock Pause Brock. That's Brock Purdy. Uh, JB, just, how do you think the, get, Niners, get, the Niners? They just get a little. They just get a little out of hand now. Hey, okay. well, listen. How, how do you think? Old, how do you think old Brock and the Niners are going to fare with old Jimmy G out till probably the playoffs? When you put film out there, you fucked. All right. So first of all, Mr. Purdy is from right around the corner here. You know, say in the valley. You know, say in the valley. Oh, the I did not know that. Quarterback. <clears throat> That's what he does. You know, say uh, Perry High School, the Purdy family. All right. Uh, there's a couple Purdy. of Purdies out there if you if you do your research. But uh, yeah, yeah. Once you put film out there, they see what you can and can't do. It's pretty much a wrap after that, and he's he doesn't have enough experience this time of year to be successful. Now, if he came in in game three and had some lumps and bumps and got to adjust to what's going on and fucked up and got back right and and, and then start to have some success, yeah. But not right now, nah, bro, nah, nah. You you fucked. Who they play next week? Uh, who do they play next week? They are go to the picks. They play. They are home against Tampa. Oh, the Tom Brady huh. return. He's huh. out for blood. You think Tom Bowles ain't for the? Ooh, we. <laughs> ooh, by the way, them big fast sons of the bitches. Ooh, them big fast sons of the bitches. They got playing linebacker. Ooh, we. By the way, ooh, not going to be ugly. Tom, Tom Brady three and one since the divorce. Maybe it's four and one now. New girlfriend, hot. New girlfriend is nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, TB, what do you mean? TB, <laughs> you been my guy. You know, hey, look, TB been my guy, bro. That dude, that boy, that got some thug in him. Hey, TB, hey, players <laughs> don't fall. You know what I'm saying? We, hey, look, we fall, pick up, dust off. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Hey, ooh, wait. Mitch, what, which, what, what do you think about the Niners trajectory without old jumping Jehoshaphat Garoppolo? Since everyone thinks I'm Mr. Debbie Downer over here, I actually oh, really... All right, there, there he goes crying again. No, I actually really like Brock Purdy. The fact that he's the first mystery relevant to throw a touchdown, it's a really cool story. Um, I've actually met him, and I know a lot of people that coach oh. him. He um, mm. seems like a really good dude. The coaches was say he, that was he... Was he, was really he with Gio out here? Did he oh, work that? with Gio out here? No. He didn't ever work with Gio? No. Um, okay. Uh, no, everybody else does, so... He was he was uh, one of the QB camp coaches for Brock. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, God, I can't remember his name. I'll think of it in a second. My bad. Um, but I think he'll actually do really good. I'm looking at his schedule. Bucks are rough, but then he has Thursday night against Seahawks. There won't be a ton of tape yet. Then he has the Commies, the Raiders, and then the Cardinals. I think he's actually set up to go three and two, four and one, and then look pretty decent heading into the playoffs. I'm not saying they're winning the Super Bowl, but I do think that he actually looks pretty good heading into the playoffs. Okay, all right, keep it, keep it moving. We'll cover your ears. The Ravens beat out the lowly trash bag garbage Broncos ten to nine, but Lamar Jackson has sprained his PCL and is scheduled to be out for the Steelers game. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mitch. I think this was about the time last year where the slide happened when Lamar got hurt last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you think about Lamar getting banged up at such a crucial time for that AFC North race? Um, I'm, I'll look at the injury last year in a minute, He's, and then I can tell you that part. Yeah, I yeah. think it really sucks for the timing. Like You get hurt two times right before the playoffs. Um, it affects your stats. It affects you know like when your contract negotiation... They're going to bring it up. They're going to bring it up that he's, you know, been injured right before the playoffs. And that does hurt your money outlook a little bit. 
At the end of the day, he's going to get a contract. He's a great quarterback. He's proven a bunch of people wrong. Just give him the money. Look at next year. Yep, JB. So what I think is that uh, what's the guy's name that's going to replace him? Of uh, um, basically his, yeah, Hulley, basically his yeah. his clone. Uh, I think it's going to kind of help him in a sense because Hulley's going to run more than Lamar would right now. Uh, so he's going to be making those plays that are going to help them keep chains moving. Uh, I think it's going to be a kind of a, not to disrespect Lamar, but a refresher for their offense. So, because they can't do everything they could do with Lamar, with Huntley, right? So I think that it's going to be kind of a boost. I think they're going to win. I think they'll be fine until Lamar gets back. I think when Lamar comes back, you know what I'm saying, he'll do he'll do work like he always does. I, think, I, I don't really think it's a bigger deal. It sucks that he got hurt, but I don't think it's that big a deal, right? By the way, Mitch, real quick, uh, not for nothing. Yeah, week 14 last year. So, yeah, it's a bit about the same time. So, right. not for nothing, you, uh, Mitch, you want to talk about quarterback delusion. Lions Twitter has been going crazy because Lamar has been liking a bunch of Lions tweets. And uh, I'm just saying, it's kind of awesome. I'm just saying. I'm sorry, Will. I'm sorry when he signs when he signs the bag, when he signs the bag with the kitties. Oh, man. And, yeah. I mean, Does sure, look, like hold now. on. Let me ask you a question, Vinny. Let me ask you a question, Vinny. Like a serious question. Yeah. Just like a, I mean, a serious question. Does Detroit have enough money to pay anybody? I mean, they will because they're coming off a lot of money from golf. So, and okay. I mean, you got to, and a lot of guys are on rookie deals too. So, because remember, right. um, old boy TJ Hawkinson wanted the bag. He wanted a big extension. That's why they traded him to the Vikings. So they really kind of right. got off some future money. So right, I don't right. know, you know, you know, he's playing possum trying to trying to get the big deal, but that was that was just kind of and that was just off the off the whole Lamar thing. I'm just thinking about just thinking in general, like, do y'all got money to pay people like that? Well, it's, a di- it's a difference yeah. between having it and being cheap. You you know from experience, you can give it, but you might be you might be Mister hey. Pockets. You know what I'm saying? Some hey. franchise. I, I know. Hey, I'm trust me, I know about cheap. I know cheap. Trust me. <laughs> Hey JB, so, speaking speaking of uh, speaking of uh, uh, not being cheap and apparently not paying anybody, that might have led to one's demise. The Eagles pound the Titans thirty five to ten, and they the Titans have fired John Robinson after giving him an extension. Uh, Mitch, you are a resident Titans fan. Uh, what is your intel telling you about why Mr. Robinson was let go and let go at this time after just getting a, an extension? Not that unlike one Steve Kime. So let me answer. A previous question, I'll come back to this. Right yes. now, without anything going on for next year, the Lions have $28.5 million in cap space, all right, which, so as we all know, you can easily turn that into 40 or $50 million yep. super right, right. easily with how the super NFL right. works. So they do have money to pay somebody. Now back to Your my cash. demise and sadness. <laughs> um, John Robinson started off really good drafting people. He found some gems, but he spent nine picks – one, two, three in the last three years on offensive linemen, and maybe one's good. Uh, Petit Freire, who the only reason I'm saying maybe he's good is because this is rookie year, and I don't want to be a jerk yet and say he's not good, but he has shown potential. So the fact that they're a running team, they can't get offensive linemen. They've made no, like, they've gotten worse every year for the last three years. Like, even though they were one seed last year, they were worse than the year before. And... At the end, of, no, I'm not telling to play Willis. Every time he touches the ball, he fumbles it, William. <laughs> I don't want to, Willis. I already want to do that. I already freaked out on you, William. But <laughs> um, he's just, he's that guy that thinks he's smarter than everybody that I've kind of noticed. And every once in a while, he finds gold and proves that he is. But he's had so many misses lately that I'm excited, not because the next GM might be great. I'm excited because it's different. And I just need different at this point. Yeah, who who was the guy that they who did they it was that who was it Bud Dupree that he gave the big deal to from from the Steelers? That's really kind of Which, been his year, undoing. He's done pretty good. He hasn't he hasn't done yeah. Bud Dupree money good, but he's actually done a lot for that team. I'll give him that much. Sure. But Bud, Bud Bud Dupree has always just been a solid ass player, and he's gonna be solid. He's durable. He's rugged. You don't get hurt right. much. You know what I'm saying? So he, he's gonna earn his money. So he, you know he wasn't a bad sign. Right. Okay. How much of this, though? I mean, like, gotta be honest, JB. Timing's uh, pretty, pretty uh, interesting considering that they lost to your drafting team, who signed who, who got who in the uh, in the deal? Oh, one AJ Brown, young AJ, and all of a right? sudden. I mean, but, they, but, here's the, but here's the thing: they knew AJ Brown's worth. 
They just didn't want to pay him, right? That's the NFL, bro, right? That's the NFL, right? So, so they're so look who their coach is, right? Vrabel. Well, where Vrabel come from? What tree is he from? The Belichick tree. When is the Patriots paid anybody big ass money, right? Come on now. They feel like we can get a bunch of hard workers for decent money and a bunch of really hard workers for very minimal money and a couple hard workers for real good money and make a real good team. And Tennessee has been doing that shit since Brable's been there, right? So shout out to Mikey. They've done great things. So that's no knock on them, right? Who the fuck knew? I mean, we knew A.J. Brown was a ball player. Philly just came up, right? Let's be real. So it, it really, in, in in AJ Brown's mind, okay, yeah, it was like a little bit of a you know stick it to him, but AJ Brown was gonna ball regardless, right? Thanks. It really had nothing to do with the Titans. So they, and, and again, like I said, to me in my mind, because my mind is GM, my mind is is executive. We're, it's nothing personal. We just don't want to pay you that type of money because one, we want to put it in other places, right? Right. It is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And AJ Brown, a ball player, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, what the hell? Here's one thing I want ball players to understand and realize is this. If you want to win a championship, you want to win a championship, you can't fucking request that gigantic bag. True. Because they ain't got There's money no to spend elsewhere. It. They ain't got money to spend elsewhere. So, if you want to win a championship, then you can't request that gigantic bag. You have to say, you know what? I'm on a team that's good. We got pieces. We got weapons. We can be effective. We can win games. We have a chance to win a title in the next two or three years. Right? Yep. Pay me good. Pay me fair. Give me a nice sheet behind that money. I'll be here. I'll do good work. Yeah. And we win a championship. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Mitch, go ahead. I think one of the big things, too, is I did like that Robinson and Vrabel seemed like they were on the same page. They both seemed like they both wanted the same people. But I do think there needs to be friction in that room. I think that they need to disagree. I think there needs to be more devil's advocate. Um, The last time the Titans fired somebody and they were under fire for it was um, Mike Malarkey after they finally won a playoff game and they were 9-7 and and they got Vrabel out of it. So before I go out here and say, you know, Titans are this, Titans are that, They've made, they fired people at really weird times, and then they've decided that's their ceiling, and they go with someone else and aim higher. And I really think that Titans are willing to do that. It shows me that they're a caring organization, unlike some other organizations that are willing to be, you know, <laughs> steady slow. But, you know, I'm not going to judge it until, you know, there's a more clear picture on who they have in mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And finally, before we get to picks, you talk about making moves in teams that are, are paying for going in all for the title. Well, look at this. The Rams have picked up Baker Mayfield off the waivers when he was released from the Panthers. Matthew Stafford is out. Uh, Vaughn Miller is unfortunately out for it with the ACL tear. And then Odell meets with the with the Bronc with the Broncos with the Cowboys with no deal. And apparently information is being leaked. So, uh, Mitch, j- just the just these three these three quick news items, real quick. What are your what are your thoughts on all this? Um, I find it funny that Baker Mayfield plays Seattle or plays. Yeah, Seattle this week, right? Well, they play the uh, the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they play the Raiders. Okay. Raiders. So, yes. cool. I guess he had a chance of winning a game. <laughs> on Thursday, <laughs> on Thursday night, and he you might start. <laughs> yeah, you might start, and you might actually pull out a win because it's the Raiders, and no one trusts them at this point. Von Miller, that not sucks though. for you. You were tearing <laughs> it up. No pun intended, but you were doing great. Like, it sucks to see when the great players are out. <laughs> And Odell Beckham, just sign a team already. I don't give a flying ass what you do. Sign with a team. You know who you're going to play for. You know what you're going to do. Just sign it and get out of the media. I'm tired of this. Oh, no. JB, what do you think? Baker Mayfield signs with LA Rams, typical. All right. Uh, he's going to go over there, maybe have one good game, be trash, because that's who he is, right? Uh, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It had a spark when you started, but now you just garbage. That's you, Baker, right? <laughs> um, Von Miller, sorry for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got money, though. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, speedy recovery. And Odell Beckham Jr., bro, nobody's ever cared. Seriously. Like, seriously. Like, nobody gives a fuck. ESPN gives a fuck, but nobody else gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because all you're going to do is come to a team. you got to learn the fucking offense. You're going to be there two weeks before you really have an impact anyway. Right? 
So you're never going to really have the impact that you had with the Rams last year. So nobody gives a fuck. Like Mitch said, just fucking sign a contract with somebody and go about your fucking business. Stop taking edibles before you get on fucking planes. But you try to open a goddamn amazing. emergency door. Before you try to open an <laughs> emergency happened? door. They, yes. Before oh, you wow. open an emergency door, you try to open an emergency door, you get fucked up. What the hell? Weirdo. What fucking air marshal shit is this? Jesus Christ. He was like, he, he was like crying foul play on Twitter. Like you were high as shit and you try to exit the plane. What the fuck? This has Jesus. to be the whitest thing I've ever heard. This is actually the first time I heard this story, but getting high on edibles and trying to jump out of the emergency exit has to be the whitest thing I've ever heard about an airplane story. So he so he he, I don't, he never did that. He never tried to jump out, but like they he tried to put a they, they told him to put a seatbelt on, he wouldn't do it. Oh, okay. He I did put a seatbelt story, on. Then. Never mind. No, no, yeah. now there was a person that tried that tried to open the exit door, you know what I'm saying? That was a story too. That was like a week ago. The same kind of the same Christ. timeline. But Jeez. Odell Beckham Jr. stops doing edibles before you get on planes and refusing to put oh seatbelt on. God. And like I said, before you try to do some dumb shit, because edibles make you do dumb shit. And Next. don't be dumb, bro. You're trying to get a contract with an NFL team? What? Right. Not the what? best time to get that. Yeah, what? exactly. Exactly. What? So if any like, edible company is willing to sponsor us, I will gladly take them. Thank you. Great. Yeah, edible oh, company. Hit us up. JBMettingBlue over gmail.com. We will we'll, we'll it. gladly uh, take it. You know what I mean? I like Damn. flour. Ding. He likes edibles. It's okay. <laughs> there it is. All right. So look, talk, speaking of strapping in the plane, uh, let's get it, fellas, with these picks. But before we got to see how we did after 13 weeks of foosball with a drum roll, please, Dr. Uh, Bridges, at 113.78 and two. That's right. I said two, but yours truly is at 120.71 and two. Let's run through them Another here one? real quickly. We had a tie. The Bill Mafia got it done Mafia. against the Patriots on Monday night. Steelers got it done. We both got that right. I correctly picked the Panthers. Both picked the Kitties. Both picked the Vikings. The Commanders and the G-Men. Mitch, we should have known it was the perfect storm for a tie. And fucking A, they tied. The Eagles beat Mitch's Titans. The Ravens beat the Broncos. The Browns beat the Texans. And Deshaun Watson's return. The Squawks beat the Rams. I correctly picked the Niners. We, we both picked the Chiefs. lost to the Bungles. JB correctly picked the Raiders. Uh, both picked the Cowboys. And we both picked the Bucks on Tampa Bay's another fucking game-winning drive on an otherwise shitty Monday night football can game. I, can, I, can I just defend the Giants and Commanders game real quick? Yes, real quick. It was a good football game. I'm sorry. That's I didn't even watch it. I got to run it back. It was good. This. I watched the whole right. game. It was good. It was good. Was, you talk about a heavyweight bout slugfest. Good plays, mistakes, bullshit. Good defensive plays, great offensive plays. It was just a good football game, right? And I'm anxious to see what's going to happen in two fucking weeks. All right. Well, the you know the division the division is still in playoff implication, so we'll see about that. But right now, let's get into it with some motherfucking Week 14 Savage picks. Starting on Thursday night, it's the Rams hosting the the the, the getting hot kind of Josh Jacobs most yards this season so far. There, there Raiders, it is. There it the is. Raiders, and the line is six. For the Raiders on the road, aka a home game, because it's in LA. Uh, Mitch, starting with you, who do you, who do you got in this one? Remember how I told you I don't care about the Raiders or Baker Mayfield. I stand by that, but let's go for some buffoonery on this. I called buffoonery last time. I'll call buffoonery again. I got Baker winning this one. Wow. Okay. Fuck, JB, fuck that. Got? Raiders, it is. Yeah, I'm taking the uh, Raiders as well. I really hope Baker plays in this game. Um, I'm curious to see I if hope the Rams... he plays and I hope he gets his ass beat. <laughs> gets him mashed out. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. So we're both taking the Raiders in that one. All right, it's the Bills <laughs> Mafia, Mafia at home hosting the J-E-T-S Jets, 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 who are still alive with old Mike White. And Mitch, the line is nine and a half for the Bills at home. Um. God, I like that line at first, but now I think this is the bad Mike White, the bad Mike White week. So I think Buffalo kills them. Okay, JB, who you got? Well, uh, I would not take that line at all because Buffalo, you know, what I'm saying again, losing Von Miller is tough. So the Jets are going to make some plays with that kid White just running. You know, what I'm saying because the defense of the person that's replacing uh, uh, Von is going to run up field and he's going to take off and make some plays. So uh, Bills win it. But it's going to be kind of a nail biter for about three quarters. Yeah, I'm taking the Bills as well. Um, you know, this is where they need to get in the groove and taking control of it of the division. The Mike White story has been cool, but I think if maybe if it were in MetLife, it could be a much closer contest. But I don't like the line necessarily. But I'm taking the Bills as well. All right, Mitch, 
The Browns, for some reason, have had the Bungles number, and now you're bringing Deshaun Watson back, so it's going to be quite the battle to watch. It's Cincy at home uh, minus six. Who do you got in this one? Um, the reason the Browns have Cincy's number is because the Browns have a really good D-line, and Cincy can't figure out the O-line issue. It's as simple as that. Um, that being said, the Browns have a lot of injuries. I was looking at like a ridiculous amount of injuries on like key defensive players. I don't trust their defense at this point. I really don't trust Deshaun yet. Um, I got Bengals. Okay. Jimmy, what you think? So, sissy. Yeah, I think Joe Shiesty finally gets revenge, especially um, at home. This, this could be the opportunity. We'll cover years that the Bengals take the lead here in this division, so we're all taking them. All right. It's the red hot. Ding, I'm about them cowgirls. I mean, them cowboys hosting the Houston H-Town coming down, baby. And the line is 16, Mitch, for the Cowboys at home. Ooh-wee. When I saw this line, I, like when I first saw it, I was like, I wonder what the line is because it's probably 12 and a half. And then when I looked it up, it was actually 16 and a half. And I was like, this has to be one of the biggest lines in NFL history. This is absolutely sad. There's no way Houston wins this. Dallas wins. Yep, JB. Yeah, so let me tell you one thing about the H. So they're playing shitty ball. So <laughs> Dallas by... <laughs> Yeah. As many points as they want to score. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, Dallas by a lot and getting starting to get very close. The Eagles better not slip because now they they, uh, they get this dub. It's right let's, there. Let's, let's not get out of hand here. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Philly lose no more games this year, but we'll see. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. All right, Mitch, here's a contest for you. My kitties at home against the Arr, Skull Vikings, and Detroit is favored by two and a half at home. I trust Vegas. I don't trust me. I don't trust anything. I don't want to say this, but Detroit, I, I have Detroit winning just because Vegas scares me. You don't trust anything. Uh, JP, what you got? What I do trust is defense, and I do trust that Jared Goff is still trash, even though he's been playing good ball. I trust that he will fuck around and throw Minnesota a pick oh, to lose no. the game, and I do no. trust that Minnesota will win the game late. <laughs> Uh, Kitties get it done by playing a little bit more zone this week than man, confusing Kirk Cousins um, and just doing you know what they do on offense, which is very balanced, running the ball, controlling the clock, and making plays. DJ Chark is finally coming on. And let me tell you something, man. Now you got to watch out for Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams is now back. I'm on Roz balling. I'm telling you, man, this one, that line, Vegas is cheeky with that two and a half fucking line because this may be one of those down to the wire field goal games. But, of course, taking the kitties. All right. It's Mitch's Titan Up Titans in a division game, and the line is four for your Titans at home, Mitch. Um, Titans. All right. JB, who you got? Oh, man. Look, Jacksonville playing good ball right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Titans are bullshitting. All you got to do. All you got to do is shut down Derrick Henry. And with that being said, Tennessee wins the game. <laughs> well, listen. Jaguars got mashed out last week to my kitty, so they're gonna they're gonna come back and they're gonna be a lot more ready to play. But they're definitely still gonna lose against the Titans there on the road. All right, JB, you were allu you were alluding to, to what the Eagles could be facing. Well, here's what they're facing: they're going against the G Men at MetLife, and the line is a touchdown for Philly on the road, Mitch. Oh, are you talking to your JB? I thought yes, you yes. <laughs> You're, you're no, shit, I'm, not, I'm not Mitch. I'm not Mitch. <laughs> um, I think I think Philly faces Dallas next week also. I have Philly losing two weeks in a row this week. Ooh. 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 Look at Jamie's face. What you got, sir? Philly. Philly. So at this point, I think Philly really bites down on that fucking mouthpiece because they know they got a fucking division rival coming up and they know they're going to face a hard team. They're going to fucking fight harder, right? Coming into the game that they know they have to fucking destroy. They're not overlooking New York. They want to mash New York out to kind of send a message to Dallas. I got Philly winning the game. I got Philly winning. And I'll take too, the line, by the way. I, I'm going the other way. I'm, I'm t I got Philly winning, but I'm not taking a line. I think it's going to be closer than that. I think the G-Men know that they left one slip away, and it's going to be some very interesting ball there in MetLife. So we'll see what's up. All right. Steelers hosting the quote the Raven Nevermore and the line is two and a half for Pittsburgh at home, Mitch, with I think without Lamar. Um without 
Um, Pittsburgh. Um, All right, yeah. you got Pittsburgh. JB, who you got? They're playing at home? Yes, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh at home. Is. So, look, again, uh, I, I'm going to stick by what I said. I think Hilly is going to give them a spark. I think Baltimore is going to end up winning this game. Uh, I think I think they're going to make their young cat, you know what I'm saying, make some mistakes <clears throat> because he will. And, yeah, Baltimore messes around and wins this game, man. Okay, well, I'm going to take the Steelers at home just only for the fact that it's kind of one of those things I want to see, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes that way. The line is close, and Steelers haven't been very consistent this year. So there you go. All right. Hey, let's do some high knees on the plane, fellas. It's the Broncos. Let's ride going to the, and hosting the Chiefs kingdom. And Mitch, the line is nine and a half for the Chiefs on the road. Come off a tough when loss. You, at what point are you going to put, you know, opponent versus automatic bye week? For a day. <laughs> <laughs> because, You're right, Will. I know Will. Well, I knew that Will. I didn't want to say it. I don't think any of us want to talk week. about this Denver team at all. I think if we could oh just walk it Mitch, out just, of just life, say the Chiefs are going to win. All right, Mitch, just yeah. say the Chiefs are going to win. Just Chiefs. say the Chiefs. Chiefs, there you go. Chiefs. We're all, we're, we're all, we're all taking Chiefs. Chiefs, all right. Chiefs, 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 Com- Chiefs, Chiefs. Compelling matchup. It's the, ooh, that new gang. Ooh, hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the line is three and a half for the Niners playing with their old backup Purdy, Mitch. I think Purdy throws a dumb interception at the end of the game that makes them lose it. So I'm going to go Buccaneers. It's going to get ugly for Purdy. You know what I'm saying? Tampa Bay gets the dub. Tom Brady. Tom Brady's feeling it in more He's than one way. It. You know what I'm saying? He's, He's got that fountain of youth, baby. Right. Right. Sounds like he's smashing the fountain either, apparently. Hey. Uh, I'm going the I'm going the other way. I'm actually gonna take the Niners with enough on offense to keep it simple for Purdy and enough on defense to contain because listen, it's taking Tom to get to these game winning drives against inferior teams in order to actually get the job done. They're playing the, the, guy, the, the Saints. You had to take the Saints all the way to the wire on Monday hey, night football. Benny, this is the NFL, and it's all about confidence, bro. You know what I'm saying? So to take True. them well, to the Well the Niners are confident. Wire, Okay, that's fine. But well, I don't know. When you when you lose, you know what I'm saying, you're starting quarterback, you gotta do what you gotta do in that moment. How All confident right. are you coming into a new game with this cat? Well, we'll see. All right. We'll see. Did you see that, that was the watch. second time in Tom Brady's career that he's won after being down by fourteen or more? Obviously the first time being that Super Bowl against Atlanta. Crazy. Yeah. Cra- crazy shit to watch. All right. It's the squawks going against JB's former employer. The key pounding Panthers in the line is three and a half for the squawks at home, Mitch. Squawks. Got the squawks. squawks. All right. There it is. There it is. Get a little ding ding for that one if we can hear it. Uh, all right. So we're both, both taking the squawks there. All right. Sunday night football. It is the Chargers, uh, the San Diego, San Francisco, San Antonio, Super Chargers hosting the Bermuda Triangle Dolphins coming off the tough loss in the Bay, and the line is three for Miami on the road, Mitch. Um, I got Miami. I think they win this one. They feel bad about last time. The heat ain't going to affect them. They're used to playing in the heat. They got it. Okay. JB, who you got? Uh, yeah, I think the Dolphins get some get back, man. I got the Dolphins. Yeah, I like the uh, Dolphins as well. And this one, and finally, the one that we have all been waiting for. It's a... The Bird Gang hosting the Pats, dude. And the line is one for the Pats on the road, Mitch. Oh, I can't wait for this pick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is so sad. They're coming off of a bye week. They're playing at home. They're facing a mediocre Pats team. And they're still not favored at home. This has to be a whole yeah. new low. That being said, I still have the Cardinals winning just because of the bye week, not because they're a good team. Because oh of the bye, but this is Come so on. sad. Listen, I, I, got, I got my boys winning, man, just because of the simple fact that we're at home and we're a more talented team than the Patriots. Now, I understand what Bill Belichick's going to do. He's going to outcoach Slip Kingsbury. It ain't hard to do, right? Jeez. But, but talent-wise, I think that our talent makes plays to win the game, and that's that. Yeah, I'm taking the Colonels as well, coming off the bye week, but also – the the Patriots really have a crisis on offense. Like they're really struggling. They don't really know if they want to go with Mac Jones or old Bailey Zappi. And I think it's enough, even what they can do on defense to confuse 
you know, those guys, I do think coming off the bye week is going to help. And I, I'm taking the uh, BG as well. All right, Mitch's money-making pick of the week. He's taking, I know you said four, but the line is, is, is three and a half. Either way, if you get it, you still win. He's taking three and a half against the Panthers. Last week, he correctly picked the Vikings three, minus three against the Jets, bringing his record to four and five on the year. And bye weeks, the Falcons, the Bears, the Pack, the Colts, the Saints, and the Commies. And there's only one thing left to do, Dr. Bridges. Take us home. That's what Mitch calls them, the commies. I, I know. I take know. us we home. Knew, we sir. knew what was going to happen. Hey, listen. Uh, it's only a matter of time before we're really all going to need each other. So just continue to live life for your family, for yourself, and treat others. I'm going to continue to say this. Treat others as you would have them treat your children. All right? Do that. All right. Yes. Other than that, man, we appreciate y'all. Episode 241 of the JB and Benny Blue Review. Catch us on all social media, pl- social media platforms at JB and Benny Blue, right? You know what I'm saying? That's Twitter, Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Facebook, TikTok as well. All right. Get with us, you know what I'm saying? On YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe, tell your friends about us. Yeah, we got a TikTok, same thing, at JB and Benny Blue. Get with us, man. You know what I'm saying? We live stream here in the desert, casualsports.com, all the time. It's recurring. You know what I'm saying? So you can hear our voices whenever and wherever and however right here in the valley. Hey, you want to continue to hear our voices? Patreon.com slash JB and Billy Blue. One damn dollar gets you that. That's a dollar a month. Okay? That's a dollar a month. Show you boys some love. Sponsorship interviews, new music, hate mail, love. We don't give a fuck. JB and Billy Blue Review at gmail.com. Get with us, man. Again, especially for that music because we really appreciate that. And we love to hear new music. From you young budding artists okay yes, um indeed. outside of that man episode 241 man we appreciate y'all our sponsors you know what i'm saying it's time to buy you know what I'm saying valley boys and we will start to insert you know what i'm saying because the burning bridge podcast has nicks for the year shout, shout out to johnny you all my boys is all about the birds um shout out to optimal gains fitness apparel right we will start to plug you guys as well uh, because you know what I'm saying, I'll tell you Benny about that later. But you know what I'm saying, we uh we got they we got they back as well. You know what I'm saying? That's another valley, yeah. more cast in the valley doing good things, you know what I'm saying? So other than that, man, episode yeah. 241, man. I appreciate y'all watching again, especially our folks on the East Coast. Uh it's been JB and Benny Blue. We appreciate y'all. We'll holler at y'all next, next time. week. We are out. Enjoy this weekend of football, man. It's yes, crazy. indeed. Yes, indeed. We love you folks. We'll see you next week. Peace.